What's going on internet? IG here once again with OpenSUSE 13.1. <laughs> So the OpenSUSE release of 13.1 is touted to be one of the most stable versions that OpenSUSE has put out, and to that effect they're also going to be titling it as one of their evergreen releases, which basically means one of their long-term support releases. Now why is that? Well to be honest they haven't really changed that much as far as the infrastructure and the basic underlying functions of what the OpenSUSE distro brings. But having said that, stuff has been updated since the last release of OpenSUSE, especially with window managers and desktop environments. So we have KDE 4.11 on the KDE desktop at least. And of course we have all of the up-to-date applications like Firefox and LibreOffice and all the KDE apps as well. They've all seen feature revs, so everything is nice and polished and up-to-date as you would expect in a new distro. Currently it's running 4.11.2, but I imagine this will, be up, this will be updated as time goes on. So to be honest, there's not really a whole lot to talk about when it comes to the OpenSUSE release in comparison to previous releases. But if you're looking at this distribution from either a new user's point of view or you haven't really looked into OpenSUSE too much, then stick around because I'm going to explain some of the things that are unique about OpenSUSE and what they do well in this release of 13.1. So first of all, OpenSUSE is known for its fantastic system management tools, YAST. Now, most reviews generally start around YAST because this is where most of the action happens. YAST is really something that is so unique to OpenSUSE that you, this is the only place that you can manage nearly anything about your system uh, from a root level without any getting down and dirty in the terminal. Now what I love about this is this is a real power users distro. You can come in here and tweak things out to your heart's content without having a lot of knowledge about all the different terminal tools that actually run these commands on the back end. So for example, one of the things that I've had to deal with over the last couple of years at the college campus that I've been staying at is a proxy and proxies are annoying, but OpenSUSE makes it pretty easy to configure them at the system level, making it almost transparent as far as the system is concerned by just going into network and proxy and entering in the information there. It automatically sends it to a very neat configuration file and Bob's your uncle. Now it does have tools for software management here as well, but to be honest these have been superseded by some of the other tools that they provide. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about these, though I will mention quickly about the software repositories. Now when it comes to software repositories you don't get a whole lot out of the box. By default you're going to have enabled all of the official repositories, but they aren't going to get you the good stuff like codecs, drivers and that sort of thing. So what you need to do is enable the Pac-Man repository. It's a fairly simple deal, you just go add, community repositories, and if your network connection is behaving itself, it'll give you a list of all of the repositories that OpenSUSE has available to it, or at least the ones that the system recommends, such as ones from the OpenSUSE build service, which I'll explain later, and of course Pac-Man being right at the top of the list. You add it, you enable it, and it will automatically pull in all of the codecs, Flash Player, Microsoft fonts, and all the stuff that you need to run a modern desktop these days. Now as far as KDE is concerned, quite a bit of work has gone into the little system tray down here. Now you can see we've got quite a few notifications here, including installing updates from the little Plasma widget down here to begin with. Now this is a pretty sweet deal when you think about it. It'll automatically open up the updater in the system tray down here, check for updates, and if you do have updates available, it'll present them here in this box so you can scroll through, check and uncheck, and you can click install. Once you click install, it'll give you the opportunity to review it, and then it will just chug away at updating those apps here in the system tray. So it's very convenient, very quick, and it works pretty well. Also the battery notification down here in the system tray also controls a few things about your laptop if you're wanting to control the power management a little bit more carefully. And of course on the whole KDE 4.11 is just a speedy beast. As you can see the default setup gets you down to business pretty quickly but of course you can trick it out with all kinds of widgets and all sorts of other fun stuff if the need arises. They do give you a very complete selection of software especially if you install from the DVD which is what I've done. and when you install from the DVD, you can install several different desktop environments all in the same go. But should you want to install any more applications, then it's a simple trip to the Appa Store. Now, Appa, for any of you who aren't familiar, looks very similar to the Ubuntu Software Center of about the 10.04 cycle. Basically, it's a pretty simple categorized software center. It's not the prettiest in the world, but it is very, very functional, and it doesn't hold up at all. So a simple searching of the package name, and, and click the Install button, and you're away. It certainly is an improvement on the default software management tool from Yast, 
But at the same time, you still do have to know what you're looking for if you're going to be installing software. Now, having said all that, it's worth trying out the OpenSUSE build service. The build service is basically an online repository of a lot of different apps and development libraries that are being built and refreshed on a constant basis by the OpenSUSE community. So think of it a little bit like the Arch user repository, but not quite as diverse. So let's say, for example, I wanted to search for Geary. You can see here that it has come up in the GNOME apps and also a few other repositories here, but it'll give me the most recent version in GNOME apps, so I click on that package. And you can see here that it's got all of these different versions of the operating system supported with that package. So anytime you're looking for an obscure package that isn't in the OpenSUSE official repositories, then definitely check out the build service, build.opensuse.org, and the chances are you'll find what you're looking for. Now one thing the OpenSUSE team have done very well this time around, and they continue to do this on a regular basis with each new release that comes out, is integrating the desktop environment with the root level of the system. So like I said, just a little touch like handling updates in the system tray there using a KDE widget is very, very welcome. And there's other little things like some of the splash screens on the apps that just add another layer of polish onto the OpenSUSE desktop. It's also worth mentioning that the font rendering engine that has previously bugged me so much about OpenSUSE has been refreshed, so now fonts look much nicer in OpenSUSE by default, and I don't have to go and tweak them a whole bunch just to get them looking half decent. So that's a good step in the right direction. And it's also worth mentioning the installer, because the installer for OpenSUSE, while I don't have obviously any footage of it, is an interesting one in that you can get pretty complicated and you can get kind of lost if you're not careful. But the fact that they have options that hardly any other installer has nowadays gives it a whole nother level of power and customization compared to most of the distros out there that are point, click, and install. It's also one of the quickest installers that I've seen as it laid down three desktop environments and all of the packages that go with that in a very quick time. Now, of course, OpenSUSE does support a whole bunch of other desktop environments, especially off its official DVD, including GNOME, XFC, LXDE, eLive, and a few others. But ultimately, my recommendation for OpenSUSE is that it is a power users distro. It gives you options that nearly no other distribution does, and it gives you a level of customization and a level of control that nearly no other distribution offers nowadays. At least as far as giving you, a, giving you customization without making you go into the terminal. Performance is top notch as per usual, and OpenSUSE spend a lot of time customizing the Linux kernel and the run times to make sure that the distribution flies, and 13.1 is definitely no exception. Everything looks and functions relatively stable, which is why they're gonna be using it as a future evergreen release. So it's safe to install this one on your work machine. One thing that I definitely recommend you make good use of is OpenSUSE's documentation because they have fantastic documentation on their website using the online help, and they also have some great introductions to KDE and how to get around and community support and all that sort of stuff. They're a fantastic community and they deserve a good look and a good bit of research before you install this distribution. That'll be all from me. I'll be looking at Fedora 20 in the very near future and also I'll be looking at the most recent release from Pingai and Pear OS hopefully if I get time. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful, then definitely hit the like button down below and also subscribe up there in the top right corner if you like this content on a regular basis. And I will see you all again in the very near future. Happy holidays, everybody, and peace out.